Today's topic is paracetamol toxicity. Paracetamol is also known as acetaminophen and it is a very widely available over the counter drug usually used for fever, right? So it is a very good antipyretic as well as, as it has got very mild analgesic activity. It is basically a non-opioid, non-opioid as well as non-NSAID drug. And it is usually found in several forms, in tablet forms, in uh, solution forms or per rectal formulations. Okay, so basically before going into the paracetamol toxicity, what you need to understand is the normal metabolism of paracetamol. If you consume paracetamol, it goes to your stomach and intestine and finally it gets absorbed into the circulation. And once it gets absorbed into the circulation, it goes to your liver where it gets metabolized. Metabolized to non-toxic compounds, right? Either sulfate moiety or glucuronide moiety by way of conjugation. Okay, so this, this paracetamol goes to your liver, finally gets metabolized to sulfate or glucuronide moieties by way of conjugation and finally it gets excreted into urine. A small percentage, around 5 percentage of paracetamol will be converted into a toxic metabolite known as NAPKI. NAPKI is N-acetyl para benzoquinone amine which is a very toxic metabolite. It causes centrilobular necrosis in the hepatocytes as well as cytolysis. So NAPKI is a very toxic metabolite which, causes, which is mainly responsible for the liver damage. Under normal circumstances, the glutathione reserves in our body converts this NAPKI into a non-toxic metabolite such as cysteine or mercaptopuric uh, acid. And finally, that is also ex excreted into urine. Whereas if you consume too much of paracetamol, and what happens is the glutathione reserves in your body gets depleted, depleted so much that the napki gets accumulated in the, in the liver and finally this napki will cause hepatocellular necrosis and liver damage. Right. So a patient, any patient who is coming to the emergency department, he can come. The first question that you need to ask, apart from the routine uh, age, sex, all these things, you need to ask is how much of paracetamol the patient has consumed. So, According to the British guidelines, what they say is any patient who is coming to the emergency department, you classify them as either high risk group or a low risk, a low risk group. These high risk group patients, who all comes under the high risk group patients? So any patient who consumes too much of alcohol, around like more than 21 units per week in case of males or more than 14 units per week in case of females. That is one criteria, to call it a high risk group. Second criteria is patients who, has, who are having some glutathione depleting conditions such as cystic fibrosis, malnutrition, all these things. And the third thing, condition is if the patient is already on some enzyme inducing drugs such as carbamazepine, phenobarbitone, phenytoin, all these things. So basically, if the patient is on, uh, is a regular alcohol consumer, if the patient is on some, uh, having some glutathione depleting conditions such as cystic fibrosis or uh, malnutrition or if the patient is having some already on some enzyme inducing drugs such as carbamazepine, phenophenophenitoin, all these things, then you can classify them as high risk category. All other patients will fall into the low risk category. So for this high risk category, the cutoff point like to call that to uh, label the patient as is having a paracetamol has taken a dangerous amount of paracetamol is 75 milligrams per kilogram, 75 mg per kg. If the patient, if the high risk patient has consumed more than 75 mg per kg, then you need to be careful. You, the patient, you have, to, you have to admit the case and treat it accordingly. Whereas in case of low risk group, those who, in case of all these low risk group of patients, 150 mg per kg is the cutoff. All patients who, have, who are having, who have consumed more than 150 mg per kg, then you'll have to admit and treat. Less than 150 mg per kg, you can actually safely discharge the patient, but you need to follow it up later on to look for the, whether there is any change in the LFT, liver function test or not. So you basically admit these cases. One thing you need to, you need to understand is that uh, paracetamol, the peak effect of paracetamol takes 
around uh, peak uh, levels of paracetamol in the blood will be at around four hours after consumption. So any paracetamol you consume, most of them will be absorbed, but the peak levels will be seen at around four hours. So any, if a patient has come to you within one hour of consumption, you'll have to wait till four hours. Okay, after four hours only, you're supposed to draw the blood sample to look for the level of paracetamol. Before that, there is no point taking the paracetamol. If the patient has come to you within, within one hour of consumption, if you take, take the blood levels, it may not represent the actual paracetamol level in, your, in, in the body. And one more thing, there is a graph called the rumac matthew nomogram. In that graph, in that rumac matthew nomogram, it plot basically in, on the x-axis, on the uh, x-axis, you have got the time after consumption of paracetamol and on, along the y-axis, you have the plasma paracetamol levels. And the graph is such that it is, uh, it starts at four hours and it, it uh, extends till 24 hours, right? And you are supposed to take the blood paracetamol levels and plot the blood paracetamol levels on this rumac matthew nomogram. And if the blood paracetamol level is above this line, then you are supposed to give a antidote. Antidote is what? N-acetyl cysteine. But if the paracetamol level values are below the line, you are not supposed to give a start the antidote, which is the N-acetyl cysteine. N-acetyl cysteine is what? N-acetyl cysteine is basically a precursor of glutathione. I have already mentioned that the NAPKE is the toxic metabolite which causes hepatocellular necrosis. So, NAPKE is converted into a non-toxic metabolite by glutathione. And now I have told N-acetyl cysteine is the precursor of glutathione. So, if you give, administer glutathione, N-acetyl cysteine, finally you are, actually, you are basically aiming to increase the level of glutathione reserves in your blood. And thereby you are trying to protect the liver, you are trying to convert NAPKE to non-toxic Metabolite. So if the patient has come to you within one hour of the consumption of paracetamol, like if it is an overdose, you can actually do a gastric gastrointestinal decontamination. That is, you can, you can actually do a gastric lavage to take out whatever paracetamol is there in your stomach outside. Okay. You can actually uh, also give uh, something called as activated charcoal, one gram per kg or maximum 50 grams. You can actually give uh, through, through by, by putting in a, a rails tube, through that you can actually pour it, uh, pour it as a, in the form of a slurry. So that it decreases the absorption of paracetam, paracetamol from the stomach by around 83 percentage. Right? And the main thing that you need to understand is that the effect of paracetamol starts within one to two hours, peaks at around four hours after consumption and it is, stays there for quite some time. There are different stages of paracetamol toxicity. There are four stages. Within the first 24 hours, patient will complain of nausea, anorexia, vomiting, all these things. Okay, and from 24 hours to 48 hours, patient will complain of all these nausea, anorexia, vomiting, and all these things. Apart from that, patient will also have a right hypochondria pain. At times, hypovolemia may also be present. And and in stage 3, which starts from 48 hours to 96 hours. And uh, in this condition, patient will develop severe hepatocellular necrosis, right? I've already mentioned, like, towards the end, the NAPKE causes centrilobular necrosis. Finally, it leads to severe alteration of liver function uh, tests, especially ALT, will be grossly ele uh, elevated and there you will also find severely uh, deranged coagulation parameters. And also, so at times you can also get a, a renal function abnormalities also. And in stage 4, stage 4 is a period of recovery. If the patient goes, if the patient uh, sur survives stage 3, at times it, it, patient can either uh, be go to hepatic encephalopathy and death in stage 3 or if he, if he survives stage 3 he can go to stage 4 that is a period of recovery and that will take a few weeks for recovery these are the stages of paracetamol toxicity another thing you need to understand is that after 8 hours only we need to send all these blood parameters like LFT RFT PT INR and also the ABG 
basically to look for the pH as well as the bicarb values. Also, why do you need all these things? Why do you need to send all these uh, LFT, RFT, pH and all these things? Basically, there is, you need to understand whether the patient has to be referred to a liver specialist or not. There is some other thing called as King's College criteria, which is basically to understand, to predict the mortality in patients who have, who have consumed paracetamol. Right. In that criteria, the main, there are few major things. pH, if it is less than 7.3, even after fluid resuscitation, and or, or and uh, if the PT value is more than 100 uh, seconds, or if the INR value is more than 6.3, or if the creatinine value is more than uh, 3.8 milligrams per de deciliter, then these all these things point towards the very high mortality in case of a paracetamol consumption. In, the, in all these cases, the patient has to be referred to a liver specialist. In the emergency department, what you need to understand is that within one hour if the patient comes to you, you do a gastric decontamination, wait till four hours, take the blood paracetamol levels, and if the blood, blood paracetamol level is available within a few hours itself, you can actually plot it on the rumac -Mathy nomogram. If it lies, if the point lies above the graph, you need to start N-acetylcysteine as the antidote. If it is below the graph, do not start N-acetylcysteine. And later on, the N-acetylcysteine dose, dosage, I need to mention it right now here. The N-acetylcysteine dosage for adults, it is 150 milligrams per kg given over one hour. There are basically two, two protocols, either the IV protocol or the oral protocol. The IV protocol is a basically 21 hour protocol. The oral proto protocol, oral, it's a, it's a 72 hours protocol. The IV protocol, the basic, the starting dose is 150 milligrams per kg given over one hour, 50 milligrams per, per kg given over four hours, 100 milligrams per kg given over 16 hours. This is the 21 hour protocol. And all this in N-acetyl cysteine is basically given in dextrose 5 percentage. In the, like, the first 150 mg per kg, you can give it, give it in 200 ml of uh, uh, dextrose 5 percentage, 50 mg per kg can be given in 500 ml and 50 mg, 100 mg per kg can be given in 1 liter of dextrose 5 percentage. That is about the IV protocol. In case of oral protocol, if the patient is not willing for IV injection, you can actually give n in the form of tablets. That is a 72 hour protocol. There you give 140 milligrams per kil kilograms per oral stat. And then you give 17 doses of 70 mg, 70, 70 mg per kg uh, n acetylcysteine at a gap of 4 hours. So, total will be 17, start of 140 mg per kg, then 17 doses of 70 mg per kg n acetylcysteine. This is the normal treatment that you give in case of a paracetamol toxicity, right? And apart from this, Treat the underlying other, if the patient has gone into hypotension or, or, or all these things, give fluids, right? And if the patient, if the, by, the, by the time you have already, uh, patient is already on treatment, if the patient develops some anaphylactoid reaction, then you need to discontinue the N-acetylcysteine infusion for quite, uh, for a short period of time. Give whatever the supportive medications, the antihistamines or whatever it is, you give it. And finally, you restart the N-acetylcysteine at a very low dosage, okay? around 50 mg per kg, you can actually restart. So, basic idea is any patient who is coming to your department with paracetamol toxicity, identify how much dose the, dose the patient has consumed, treat it, identify whether the patient has consumed a toxic dose or not, and when the patient has consumed paracetamol, and accordingly, you draw blood samples for serum paracetamol levels, LFT, RFT, INR, creatinine, all these, all these things you need to draw at suitable time, time intervals. And finally, you are basically trying to convert what? The NAPKI into non-toxic metabolite by giving N-acetyl cysteine. This is the major treatment to be given in an emergency department. And if the patient falls into any of these King's College criteria for which predicts mortality in case of paracetamol poisoning, then you refer the patient to a liver specialist. Okay, thank you.